Hello, Muse here. Um, so I actually just wanted, I actually saw, came across this uh, today. Obviously, I think it was posted today. But um, I actually found this, this clip to actually be really interesting, um, especially in regards to like music and stuff like that. Um, I guess just to give a little context here. So I can't pronounce, I guess, what is that? Yeah, yo, I can. So they posted a clip from I don't I don't remember which stream this was from, but I guess it was like her recent one, and it says right here, management has advised Bay to choose between music or streaming to avoid burnout, but she has ignored all advice and has been both and has been doing both. I respect her decision, and I'll continue to support her and believe she will do well. And I'm going to go ahead and play the clip just to give a little bit more context. And then I'm just going to go ahead and actually talk a little bit about it because I actually, I actually have some pretty, like, I don't know. I just have some thoughts on this I'd like to share and maybe, get, maybe, maybe just give in some perspective into the whole music thing, especially with music and streaming. I'm trying to do both, really, in general, I think, is actually just a, a, pretty, a pretty important conversation. So let's just go ahead and play this clip. Real talk. I think uh, I had a, a meeting with with, uh, with with management. It was kind of like just like a little talk. I think a uh, year ago or two years ago, and then they were just you know talking about how talent you know you, you see kind of um, the way different talents approach their activities, and <laughs> what they said they were like you know you have some talents who gear towards streaming and they stream a lot. But then you have other talents that, you know, if they focus on music, they don't stream as much because they need to focus on music. And eventually you're going to have to choose one if you're both musically driven, but you also like streaming. You're going to have to choose one because then you won't have enough time. Um, but I chose to ignore all the advice they gave and just decided to do both as much as I could until I couldn't. So... I'm still trying to do... <laughs> I'm still, I'm gonna, I'm trying to do a Cali and just do everything. So it might not be less streams. I'm very, I, I don't want to sacrifice my streaming schedule, but I'm trying to reschedule like rehearsals. So they are after my streaming time. So it will be like evening time. You know? <laughs> but obviously there'll be days where, you know, I'll have to go to the studio or there'll be a rehearsal that I can't reschedule and therefore I won't be able to stream. But. But. <laughs> you know. I'll do my best. I'll try not to, you know, let my streams take too much of a hit. But! I hope you guys understand. Okay, so that was the clip, and let's just go ahead and actually look at some of the comments here. It says, I was about to say, she's just like her sister, and then she said it. Each girl's priorities, but they all bring their own talents and charms. They know what's best for themselves. Any replies to this one? She is not Callie. Callie said multiple times that streaming is like her chill activity, almost a hobby for her now, and helps her to relax. But we saw Bay with a lot of stress multiple times due to her streaming activities. So that's actually a really that's actually a really good point by Senjo here, and I'll get I'll get into that a little bit later. She can take a break. Yeah, got some advertisements here. Hope she doesn't burn out though. Do a Cali, new term for overworking yourself. But I really hope she doesn't actually get burnt out because of it. At least she seems to take breaks semi-regularly. Okay. Her manager up to... <laughs> That's a good one. Last two seconds sums it up nicely. Chad asked her if she would ever consider going for a music focus. At the time, I think she said she was more comfortable with streaming. Sorry for the little uh, hiccup there. Uh, fast forward to now, who would have imagined she would be uh, slain both? Burnout, of course. They're advising her, though. It shows genuine care for the talents. Uh-huh. To avoid burnout, you need to choose... You don't need to choose one thing, but alternate between different things. Okay, that's a really good point. Um, Bay is fine. Her music is fire, and so is her streams. It's a good fire, we promise. Can't stop her. 
Okay, so it's kind of just kind of comments are just uh, going in a little bit like that. I think one thing. See, here's the thing though. Like, kind of like he said, uh, who was it? Uh, yeah, right here. I remember before she took to music creation, Chad asked her if she would ever consider going for a music focus. Now, actually, I think this is really interesting because um, I, in one of my videos, too, I, I did say that, um, uh, I mean, I did also look at one of her, uh, when I was reading her in interview with, um, I forgot the magazine, but when I was reading her interview, she said that she, she said, yeah, she said to herself that she wasn't really, you know, it, I, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. I think she was interested in it, but, you know, she kind of just, like I said before, she really wanted to test the waters to see where she was at, to see how much I think people would respond to it. I think if maybe she got a, like a negative or kind of like an underperforming or an underwhelming response, she may not have gone towards it as much. Um, but just because, you know, because of her singles and her EPs, uh, she she found a lot of success in those and people actually really liked it. And so she kind of just decided, hey, you know, music is a, it, it's, it's actually really fun to her. It's something she really likes to do. And so she's going to move forward with it. Um, it's funny too, though, that, that uh, the way they said it, though, is that uh, she says you kind of have to choose one or the other, because if you remember... If we go to, uh, oh gosh, I don't remember which one it was, but I think, uh, I think Bay, she stopped doing like the, um, the voice acting stuff. Uh, you know, you remember like Baywatch, you know, I'm sure maybe you mm, remember Baywatch. I don't, I don't even actually remember what that was about, but I do know she did, she did do it for a little bit. Uh, let's go back down, all the way down, actually. A couple videos. Beige, My Domination, Episode 2. Okay, I don't really know what, I, don't, I never really watched this, I don't really know what this is. Uh, anyways. Oh yeah, Baywatch, Summer, Beach Day. Yeah, I do, I do know that, you know, this was something she did, you know, like, kind of just what she wanted to do for fun. I do also remember her, I think, making like a community post or something like that, saying she was like, she was like graduating from something or another. Uh, yeah, it was, it was way before this. I don't remember which one it was, but, but, you know, you know, that's just kind of besides the point. Maybe I could find it on her... Can I find it on her? I don't think I could find it on her actual. Yes, yeah, she has a lot of posts. So there's like, I don't think I'm going to be able to find it at all. Yeah, she has a lot of posts. It's just going to take forever to find it. But, um, but, you know, like, anyways, that's, you know, it just kind of gets into the conversation. So what exactly, like, do you have to do as a musician, you know, as someone who's, you know, wants to pursue music. Now, here's the thing. So me, myself, personally, you know, I started music, you know, about 10 years ago. And I started with the piano. You know, that was like my main instrument. Um, the program I was in, it's very, it was very general. You know, it was like, it just took us through like the motions a little bit. Like, okay, here's some theory. Here's some uh, instrument, you know, stuff. And, you know, you also had to join choir too. You know, just to like just to get a smorgasbord of everything. And the thing is, um, you know, like I kind of I didn't really know what I wanted to do for like my instrument. All I just knew, I just I just knew that I wanted to do music. And um, so, you know, long story short, you know, I found that, oh, you know, like I like piano and stuff like that. It's really fun. It's really nice. And so here I am 10 years later, you know, just like, a, uh, I mean, I'm not going to like really uh I'm not really going to give myself too much credit. You know, I'm a, pretty, I'm, a, I'm a decent musician. You know, I could play, you know, this and that, you know, like, but at the, at the same time, at the end of the day, it takes a lot of time, which is kind of the point that I really wanted to, like, talk about. Because um, uh, she, even though, even though Bay, 
you know, she, she released an album, right? You know, and she said herself too that her streams will be not sporadic, but she will have to compromise because of that. And the thing is, though, like, if you want to start music, so Bay's, you know, at this point, she's not a beginner really anymore. But, you know, from my perspective, I generally do see her as like, uh, you know, she, she's still, like I said in my like other video, like she's still kind of just getting her feet wet with this stuff. Or just, I could say waiting, or you could say waiting in the waters. Like I said before, she's really just waiting in the waters, you know? Um, and I'm not talking about her, I'm not say, talking about like, oh, like that's her influence, you know? She like, she doesn't have much influence, like she's just there. But I'm just saying, it's like, she's still kind of like trying to figure it out, you know, like that. And um, here's the thing though, because, um, you know, when I was in when I was in music school, you know, they were like, uh, we had to learn, you know, theory, you know, music theory, you know, like, uh, we had to learn music notation, we had to learn music history, we had to learn um, our instrument, our respective instrument. And, you know, obviously, all of that combined is going to take a lot of time. So, but, you know, in, in terms of Bay, Bay's not obviously doing that. She's not you know, going through the rigorous, you know, the rigors of, you know, what happened, you know, who, who went, when was Beethoven born, you know, what are the four eras of music, you know, like, who, who was Chopin's, this or that, you know, like, what is the, you know, what was the, you know, who's Martin Luther, you know, like, she doesn't, she doesn't need to know all that, she doesn't need to know that, she doesn't know how, need to know how any of the, the conception of music first began or how it developed. All she really has to do is kind of just, you know, be that front, that front facing, you know, idol and just, you know, like pursue that music and use her, you know, talents to accentuate, you know, the kind of style and the kind of character she's going for, you know, through her, through her songs and through her music and stuff like that. Um, on the other hand, though, like when I, you know, like, you know, we have to look at it from a classical perspective, you know, like from, from what I, from what I know is that okay, so we didn't, we don't just have to know our instruments in theory, right? We, it is pretty genuinely, generally expected of us to, you know, say you play a note, say somebody, say you're at a gig, say somebody plays a note on their keyboard or plays a note on the guitar, right? Basically, you're supposed to kind of know what that, what that note is, right? So if so if I just play like a D on the keyboard and I don't tell you it's a D on the keyboard, you know, I'm just going to say like, okay, we're in this key here. And then you're kind of just supposed to know, okay, that's a D. You know, you want to have really good, either not really perfect pitch, but really decent relative pitch at that. Um, we were expected to know our chord progressions and stuff like that. One, four, five, one, we're supposed to know major, minor, augmented, diminished, major seventh. Um, minor sevenths, um, fully diminished, half diminished, um, inversions too, you know, like, you know, we, we could, you know, we can learn our major and minor chords all day, but then the second somebody inverts the chord and we're supposed to tell them the inversion, that's when, that's when things start to get tricky, you know, that's what separates the, you know, the amateurs from the professionals, honestly. And it's that kind of, uh, it's that little different training, you know, and so what I'm saying is, even See, though, kind of it, you know, it's a little hard to really gauge this because one, I don't really know where Bay is at and I don't know exactly what her regimen is because, uh, you know, when I was in school, they said like, okay, so how often do you want to practice your skills? And so, so, so one of my teachers was like, oh, you want to do it, you know, once in the morning and again after lunch, you know, that was just, that was just what they said, you know, really. And, you know, that was just one of the, pieces of advice I remembered, you know, you want to do it twice a day, you know, like once in the morning or like, I guess like once you wake up, like, you know, taking a shower. So sing in the shower. And then again, after lunch, you know, you're just, you're on your lunch break, you're eating your food. Why not home, you know, you know, D major while you're at it, you know, why not? Um, not to mention too, we had to learn our scales, you know, like I had, you know, I had to learn, you know, like all of the scales, you know, from C major, all the way to C sharp major, right? You know, pretty much just going through the circle of fifths on that one and just going through. And again, you know, that's another thing. Maybe, 
you know, Bay probably doesn't really have to learn all this like theory and stuff like that. I'm sure it comes with her, with her, if she takes lessons, like she said, she's doing rehearsals and stuff like that. I don't really know if those are like dances or stuff like that, or that's maybe what she just calls her lessons or something like that. Or maybe rehearsals with her vocalists and like the, um, uh, not not her vocalists, her producers or her lyricists or whoever, right? Whoever's like there helping her, you know, kind of move this along. But I think what the management is really trying to get at is that, you know, when it comes to music or streaming, you you kind of have to choose which one you want to be your full time job, right? Um, because you know, despite you know, talents put out music here and there, you know, like. But the thing is, if you really, if you really genuinely want to be good at it, you have to, you, you do have to treat it like a full-time job. You know, I'm not even kidding. You know, I could, there, there are plenty of times when, you know, I'm just playing, I'm practicing on the piano and I have to, you know, I have to keep playing over or rehearsing, I guess, you know, just four, two to two to four bars, you know, just keep playing it again and again again and again, you know, I have to do the, is the dynamics correct, you know, is the, is the way I move my hand, is the gesture correct, you know, or the, is the no, you know, strong enough, is it, does it get across the mood and everything like that, is it correct for the time period, you know, you kind of have to take into consideration all those little, all those little kind of details, especially with classical music, you know, classical music is not a joke, you know, like, I know, you know, we can, you know, we see a lot of people play the classical music, but it takes a long time. It takes hours to really get it across and stuff like that. And that's kind of the whole thing with like, if you want, th there are no shortcuts to music. You know, you cannot speed run music. If you speed run music, you will, it'll, it will 100% show, you know, it, it's just going to show, you know, it's like trying to speed run, speed run a 10 page essay the night before, right? Like, I'm sure, I'm sure there are plenty of people that could do it, right? Especially now with like AI and stuff like that, or, or you can just hire somebody to write your essay for you, you know, sure, like that's, that's well within the bounds of reality, right? That's totally possible. But the thing is that, um, especially with these kind of performative arts, you know, like dancing, you know, theater, you know, music, uh, any kind of performance, you cannot take these shortcuts, you know, and, and so I don't, I'm perfectly, I perfectly do believe Bay can do both at the same time. But even when she's saying she's already, from what I, you know, from what she said here, she's already going to sacrifice and move different streams or take away stream times, shift them a little bit, or just remove the stream entirely in order to make time for the music. So it already sounds like, you know, she's already having that priority, you know, well-established, kind of just like just being, you know, like not guaranteeing anything, you know, saying that, but at the same time, it's kind of a given that this is what's going to take her attention, you know, more from streaming than anything else. And she brought up the, the Cali, you know, situation, right? So Maury Calliope, you know, she's, you know, the, the VTuber, the rapping reaper from myth, right? So the thing about Maury is that I think, now, here's the thing. I don't, I don't know Bay's past life. I don't know if she did anything there. Um, but honestly, at this point, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, be out with it. You know, like Maury Calliope, obviously, you know, we know, or at least I do, I'm familiar with like her past life, I'm familiar with her work and stuff like that. And even before she joined Hollow Live, she was doing the music kind of gigs and things and out there performing well before she joined Hollow Live, well before she even got her feet wet. I think by the time she joined Hollow Live, she was very familiar and she was very certain that she that this was what she wanted to do. Now, I'm not saying Bay isn't certain that this is what she wants to do, but I do genuinely think that she is really still in her training arc as far as music goes, you know. Um, now, I know, and I know it's a little unfair to compare the two, and I'm not really trying to make that comparison, 
But what I am saying is that just from what I've seen, you know, what from what I've heard, you know, I've watched a lot of her um, karaoke streams, you know, and she does have a pretty good idea of what she wants in her music. I just think that she still has to develop that sense of like, that sense of, uh, you know, rhythm and kind of like, um, that sense of how to uh, get out every bit of artistry that there is in music, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of these pop, you know, at least in the mainstream, you know, I, I know like, you know, maybe the music Bay makes isn't exactly mainstream, but I'm talking about in the industry, pretty much everything is going to be like heavily, you know, like there's going to be a lot of post-production, right? There's going to be a lot of mixing. There's going to be a lot of mastering. Yeah, I mean, it depends on this, you know, the level of the song, of course. You know, if you have like 30 different instruments and sounds, yeah, the mixing is going to be pretty heavy. And likewise, the mastering. But, you know, if you just have a few instruments here or there, it's, you know, it's going to, you know, the ratio will probably, you know, accommodate. But the thing is, you know, she doesn't, she might not really need to have to worry so much about the dynamics because if she's singing too loud, that's the thing, you know, if that's a difference between, you know, physical performance and these kind of, you know, after, you know, the after everything is already done, like in, in like an album, right? Like if you sing too loud, what are we going to do? We're just going to compress it. We're just going to bring the gain down, right? Um, what are we doing when we're singing too loud? Too low. Okay, well, then we're just going to do upwards compression and we're just going to bring the gain up, right? We're going to gain stage everything. We're going to equalize stuff that we don't like. We're going to purify her tone a little bit, you know. And, you know, I, I'm sure, like, maybe she doesn't, you, you know, auto-tune isn't exactly, like, uh, you know, of course, it's, like, you know, looked down upon by, you know, a lot of people. But, but it's, whether she uses it or not is not really a bad thing. But I'm just saying that, that, you know, when it comes to performance, when it comes to actually performing these songs, it is, you can't have, you, there's no auto-tune in a live performance unless they, you know, you know, I know some music people or some music um, uh, concert halls or whatever, you know, they play the, like, the, they play a recorded version of it, right? And the singer just, you know, lip syncs to it, right? You know, they just lip sync the whole thing, right? And, you know, that's because, one, they want the performance. They don't want the singing, you know, actually singing. I don't know. They probably just want to maintain a certain reputation, you know. Like, they didn't, uh, they don't want to, like, they don't want the actor to be smirched their name, I guess, because, like, oh, they didn't sing too well. They were out of tune here and there, right? Now, because I noticed in her, in one of her uh, videos, in one of her releases, I think it was, it was the, um... Basically, it was the uh, it was the KDA uh, pop star, I believe. Pop star, all alive, yeah. Um, and there was a yeah the the live performance. I think I think it was this one. Okay, yeah, maybe it was this one. But they were. Um, I'm not gonna lie, Bay was you know noticeably out of tune for this and that's kind of what I'm trying to you know, like get at you know like you don't want you want this you want music and this and whatnot to be really second nature and in order to do that you you will have to prioritize you will have to make music your full-time job you know you will have to put streaming on the side it's it's not it's there's no way it's going to be possible I sh sure I'm sure you could do it here's the thing though with Cali. She, like I said, she was already experienced with a lot of this stuff before. She writes her own songs. Um, you know, I'm sure she improved her singing from then. And, but, you know, that's because, you know, she probably already had a lot of experience singing. I'm not saying Bay didn't, you know, based on, you know, maybe her past life activities or maybe she just sang, you know, to herself is because, like, why not? And, you know, she has a really strong voice. She has a really powerful voice, Bay. And it's going to be, I'm sure her voice will develop, you know, and be refined and mature nicely once she starts um, going full head, you know, full in, you know, pedal to the metal on the music and her singing, you know, uh, aspirations and stuff like that. But 
I she really has to take these fundamentals, these uh, basic kind of, uh, you know, know your scales. Can you sing, you know, the major, can you sing a major chord, right? What, what are its inversions like that? You know, what you have, and I, I mean, I, it's hard. I know it's going to be hard, but definitely if she can, she has to develop a really good sense of that relative pitch. And she has to develop a really good sense too of rhythm, you know, rhythm, pitch, and um, I said pitch by the, by the way, I don't, I don't know if that, um, that came in a little odd, but, but yeah, rhythm, pitch, and she has to develop, she, I think she, her dancing is quite well, she seems like a really, she's a really strong stage performer, so uh, that's not really something she has to work on too much about, and then definitely, definitely she has to just work on uh, maybe, maybe a little bit of theory, you know, just, just know how to like, um, like, like I said, you know, just, just know, like, a, a simple, you know, your scales and stuff like that, that basically is tied into, um, to music theory in a little bit, you know, you know, know what a treble clef is and stuff like that. But then also you have to know, you have to know your voice quite well, you know, you have to know what your limits are, right? Um, <clears throat> and you have to be really aware of those limits, um, especially with singing and stuff like that, because you can develop, you know, very, you know, very, uh, a sore throat or you can develop any kind of like you know anything that has to do with like the epiglottis or something like that right you know you just have to be aware of how you're singing and how you know while you take care of your voice um you know with other instruments and stuff like that like for me piano i have um i have pretty small hands i'm not i'm not gonna lie i can only i can i can reach an octave but um repeated octaves are pretty uncomfortable um you know, it's just it's just the fact that I have to maintain I have to maintain the stretch while also um, having enough kind of um, having enough pressure and force to hit the keys and everything like that. And you know, it gets really hairy when there's a lot of octave passages I have to play, especially with big chords and whatnot. So you know, that's one of my limitations too, right? You know, I end up having to I really end up having to kind of um, compromise with um some of the works some of some of the pieces that i play because um they you know they, they require like a ninth right you know i can i could reach a ninth maybe on white on like okay i should say like okay like but not really i can barely reach it on the on the white keys but the second you want me to reach a ninth on a white or black or two black keys there's just no way you know i'm just I'm just going to look at you like you're crazy, right? Because there's there's no way, you know, that space in between is physically too much. And I can hit it. I'm not going to lie. I can hit the ninth between two black keys. But the problem is I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit like another note at the same time. There's no avoiding it, right? There's just, I just can't avoid that. And that's just one of the limitations of me, you know, choosing to play piano, right? You know, I mean, uh, unless, you know, I I do something crazy and like try to like, you know how people are like smashing their legs so they can grow an inch taller or something like that, you know? And maybe, maybe I can, you know, I'm not going to do anything crazy like smash my hand and hope, uh, and I hope it, you know, the bones, the bones or something like that extend, you know, another like half inch, right? You know, I'm not going to do anything crazy like that. And I don't think Bay's going to do anything crazy like that either. But, you know, that's just kind of what I'm saying. Like, there's a lot that goes into this, that, uh, into the world of music especially, especially when he comes into like the interpretations and how to truly understand like the, the kind of the nuance and the logic between how, you know, melodies are written, how they fit into the harmonies and everything like that, right? Um, because one of the, um, one, of, I was actually really impressed with the, because Callie did a recent, a recent, um, radio podcast, I think, with uh, Kobo Canaru. Uh, Kelly, yeah, this one. Uh, she did a, uh, where is it now? I think it was a live stream. Yeah, she did a Hollow Mellow Radio, episode one, special guest with Kobo Kaneru. Kind of Eru. Um, <clears throat> and she played, a, she played a couple of games where she sung a melody, and, um, I mean, I don't know if she had the, I, I doubt she had headphones in and just sing along with the melody, but her tone, uh, Callie's tone was really good. You know, I was actually really impressed. And, um, that's actually something I really noticed from her own development, from Callie's own development, that she really, 
you know, over these past couple, you know, these past years, she's really developed her voice and she has a really good sense of that rhythm and a really good sense of the melody and tone that she has to produce. She has a really good memory too, you know, like being able to really understand and dictate that kind of, uh, you know, a, a short melody. Not only that, but, you know, when Kobo Kaneru wanted, you know, a couple, a couple hints, she would extend the melody a little bit. And being able to do that is really, really impressive. I mean, I'm sure maybe, you know, she practiced it, you know, beforehand, but, you know, still being able to do that and keep the tone, keep the melody quite pure is actually really, really impressive. And, you know, you know, if, if Bay, that's the thing, like, so Callie is a different, is a different kind of person. I know Bay wants to do with Callie, but you have to understand, like, there's, this is a, a pretty, like, like, touchy subject and whatnot, but some people have a little bit more, they're a little bit more inclined and talented when it comes to certain aspects of them, you know? Like, this isn't something that you can just, this isn't something you just, uh, this, this is basically just something you're born with, right? You know, the way they process the information in their own brains is just, is just different than you. You know, it's just different from me. You know, the way I process information is different from Callie. The way Callie processes information is the different is different from the way Bales does, and it's that kind of <clears throat> it's that kind of difference that's really gonna come into play, especially when you you know I'm I'm pretty sure Bay I'm pretty sure you know I'm sure Bay and Callie are you know you know decent friends, so I'm sure maybe Bay asked Callie for advice on how to you know really pursue music at the same time while trying to stream and i'm sure maybe she gave her some really good advice and but you know the ultimate the ultimate thing is you don't want to burn yourself out you know you're gonna be really you're you're really you're genuinely gonna be really down on yourself if you can't perform to the level that you want right because these things take a long time you know I, it took me eight years it took me 10 years to really get where i'm at with music and even then i'm still kind of just like i'm still just like okay at it you know i'm not gonna be on it i mean i mean i'm gonna be honest right like i'm still pretty okay with it i'm not you know i'm not gonna go i'm not you're not gonna see me in any concert halls you're not gonna see me be, be playing any concertos anytime soon right the most you would probably see me in is like maybe just teaching like a high school class or maybe maybe a, a college class right that's basically it, you know, maybe just be an adjunct teacher, right? That's pretty much all you, you, you'll ever see of me, right? And I, I can play, you know, the concert pieces, you know, quite well, right? You know, I've done a couple concerts, and I've done a couple juries, right, where I have to play, you know, my repertoire, my, um, my list, you know, in front of, um, you know, in front of adjudicators and in front of other people, right? And, you know, so I'm, I mean, I am familiar with that. But the thing is, like, it's just, you it, you have to know the music inside and out, really, right? If you really want to perform and if you want to reach the level of your, you know, of whoever you look up to, you have to, you, you have to look at it like that. You have to look at, you know, you know, how do you play, you know, start from measure eight, start from measure eight, you know? If you can't start from measure eight, you know, I mean, you know, that may be a bit extreme, but that's the kind of mentality you really want to have, especially if you're, you know... <clears throat> if you want to take this serious, right? If you're just doing this because, you know, if you're just doing this because, you know, hey, you're good at it, because that's that's the thing. That's what that's how I started out too, right? When I first started my music school, I was like, hey, I was pretty good at this. This is pretty easy. I'm going to go into it. I'm just going to have some fun, right? Like, I, I own the place, right? That's kind of, you know, that's a little, you know, obviously I, I didn't know, right? As soon as I got to big boy school, you know, as soon as I got into like, an actual music program, everything changed for me, right? Everything changed. Day one, day one, I was expected to just like, they're just like, all right, sing me, uh, sing me D major. And I'm like, oh, crap. Like, uh, you know, they, they played me my, um, you know, they played the, the note, right? Okay, so here, here's, here's the key. Here's the note. Sing me D major, right, from that note. And I was like, oh, crap. Like, I cannot do that. I was trying to sing. I was out of tune. I was... I was just awful, right? Sight reading, you know, they never really had a sight read, you know, when I first started. And then once I got to my program, it's like, all right, can you sight read this for me? And I'm like, oh, crap, you know? And then um, I'll admit, like, the theory was on par, but there were things that I, I clearly, 
I was, you know, I was going to skip a level, right, when it came to theory, but my counselor said, all right, you know, we're going to we're actually going to put you here. We just want to, we just think maybe you'll be a little bit better there. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, that's fine. I'll just, I'll just repeat the same level, right? You know, easy peasy, easy A, right? I got into that level and they started talking about stuff like I was, I was familiar with, but then they added more onto it, you know, like they started talking about song forms and everything. They started talking about sonatas. They started talking about like, you know, what, what's the difference between this and that, you know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, what's the, what's the song form of a sonata, right? The, the first movement, right? There's three movements, right? So what's the first movement? Okay, the first movement, it's just, it's just called sonata form. You just have the exposition, the, the development, and the recapitulation, right? Not only that, you have to identify the theme. Is there, is there one or two themes, right? When does it modulate keys, this and that, right? And I was just I was just looking at all this information like, holy crap, there's an entirely different world of music that I had no idea, you know, about. And when I went in there, I was severely under, I was severely overwhelmed. I was like, holy crap, I have to, you know, I had a lot to catch up on when I first, when I, you know, went into my program. <clears throat> and that's just, that's what I kind of, that's what I don't want to happen for Bay, right? She seems really passionate about this. She seems really into it, right? But I don't, I don't want her to go into it thinking that this is easy, you know, that I'm sure she doesn't, right? But I also, she has to be really humble about it too, right? You know, she has to really consider that autotune is not going to fix all her problems. You know, the mixing and mastering and post-production is not going to fix her all of her problems. She, you know, just because she knows how to dance, you know, you can't do both, right? You can't, I'm sure, you, you know, obviously that's what rehearsals are for, right? You know, you're going to dance and sing the song at the same time so you can practice that. But it doesn't help if you know the moves, but you don't know the melody, you know? Because that's what that, you know, that shows your weaknesses, right? And that's going to be really hard on you um, when you're, when you're, you know, doing that live on stage, right? Now, keep in mind, like, this community is pretty forgiving when it comes to, um, you know, your overall, I guess, aptitude for certain activities, right? You know, like, say, you know, you're not, say you're not the best singer, everyone's gonna be like, yeah, you know, like, that's fine, like, we're just here, we're here for you, bae, you know, we're not, we're not here, you know, we're not here to judge you, right? We know you're not some siren, right? You know, like, you're not a siren, right? Nobody has those expectations with you. Some people do, and, and you know, that depends on Bay too. Like, does she have, what are her own expectations, you know, of herself? Like, does she want what Callie has, you know? <laughs> you know, Callie is able to write her own songs. She can, uh, you know, sing her own lyrics. And not not only that, but in her recent release, she she composed part of the own thing, right? So Callie's, you know, she's really working towards being a really independent and creative artist in her own right, right? And so, you know, when you when you look at Bay, right, you know, she has to understand, she has to know like what she can and can't do. And, you know, if she goes in, you know you know, in a, in a session, right? In a recession where it's like you have a session musician and everything, you know, they're, they're, they're getting paid by the hour, right? And if you can't, or I don't know how mom, how, how much they're getting paid, but right, they get paid quite a bit, right? And they're, they're there to go, right? You know, like they're not going to play the melody for you, right? <laughs> you know, they're not going to play the melody for you. You have to know the melody. You can't be, you know, singing out of tune or anything like that, right? Like that, that's what I'm trying to say, right? You can't, you can't let the the mixing, the mixer and the producer take care of that, right? It it definitely helps. Um, it definitely helps when you know your scales. I'm gonna be honest with you, when it comes to singing too, like if you know your scales, you're gonna be pretty comfortable in your songs because you know you will know what sounds off and what sounds, you know, what's off and on key, you know. If you're singing, you know, a G sharp and in B minor, you know, you're going to know, okay, well, um, you know, th there's some nuance to that, right? You know, is it is it in melodic minor or is it in natural minor, right? Let's just assume it's not in a melodic minor and it's just in harmonic, right? So that 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 G sharp's going to be going to be pretty obvious, right? And not only that, but you know, it's just going to be 
you know, you're hitting a G sharp instead of a G natural, right? You know, you're, gonna, you're a little sharp. You know? Now, granted, the human voice is usually, I think, typically a little sharper than most instruments or than, you know, like what, what uh, you know, like the um, than equal temperament instruments like the piano, right? So it's, uh, you know, you just have to keep in mind that deviation. But, you know, you can, you can tune your voice quite well. And that's the thing, too. She has to, you have to really be able to tune, right? I remember sometimes we would, um, uh, in, in school, like, we would just play, like, little activities. It's all right, all right, you know, like, here, you know, somebody sing, somebody sing a C. You know, like, it's like, you know, we, we'd hear the C, somebody singing a C. And there's like, all right, so, uh, so like, you know, let's just, let's just, you know, so, so we tell Callie, let's say Callie, sing a C. So Callie singing a C and we're like, all right, Bay, sing a minor third below that, you know? And, uh, Mm, that's gonna, you know, that's, it's that kind of stuff, you know, you have to, I don't want to say, you have to know it on, you have to be, yeah, I'm gonna say it, you know, you have to know your intervals, you have to know that on command, basically, you know, if you're spending like a minute trying to figure that out, <laughs> you're gonna be in trouble, right, you know, um, it's, that's just the fact that it is, and I, I'm not saying this, you know, because, I mean, I'm a classical musician, right, so, What's expected of me is going to be different than what's expected of Bay, right? You know, that's how, you know, that's what I was getting on, right? You know, like the community is pretty forgiving. They're there, you know, for you, you know, not, not how well you can sing, not how well you can play, you know, not well, how well you can dance because at the end of the day, you're trying your best. So that's all you have to, you know, that's all, that's all that's really what's important to the community is to try your best and do your best. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, say Bay, you know, like I said, say Bay wants what Callie has. You know, she wants, you know, like, you know, to have that record deal, to 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 have like a bunch of albums, right? To sing song covers or anything like that, to sing an anime opening, this and that, right? You need those connections, and those connections are not gonna form if you cannot prove if you cannot prove your metal, you know. And and um, I mean from what I'm saying, you know, I'm not trying to be a downer or anything like that, but I do see Bay as someone who still has, like, she still has a long way ahead of her, right? You know? Um, you know, just because she released an album and a couple singles that did pretty good doesn't mean really anything, um, you know, to a lot of seasoned producers and musicians, right? You know, you know, she, she has her connection, sure, but it's... You know, it's like they're not going to hold your hand when it comes to brass tacks, right? You know, like they tell you to go and audition on that stage. You got to know they're not going to play no C for you. They're not going to play your scale. You know, they're going to say, all right, give me what you got. And if you can't, um, preferably before you get on stage, you know the key you're singing in, right? You kind of memorize the melody and whatnot. But, you know, those kind of, those differences are really, and those nuances, you know, those attitude notes, or maybe you saying you came in too early, maybe you misstep, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be, you're not gonna, you're gonna just set yourself up for failure. I'm just gonna be honest, you know, like that. Um, <clears throat> and the thing is with Callie, you know, she, she obviously had to prove her metal to get the the record deals and everything, and I'm sure Hollow Live um, helped with that, right? Um, kind of helped her secure that that position and whatnot. Um, but you know, at the same time, you know, Callie has proven that she's she's pretty talented at what she does. You know, I know there's a lot of hate out there for her um, and whatnot. You know, because like all her music is like her music is like kind of lame or whatever. It's kind of just like quirky or just uh, not really quirky, but like niche, you know, a little silly, not serious, you know, quote unquote serious music and whatnot. But um that's just um that genuinely does not matter, you know, I think, you know, at the end of the day, because um because she has proven that she knows how to write songs, she knows how to sing. And she can even produce a little bit now, you know, she can even, you know, contribute to the compositions, you know, a little bit, you know, and, and it's that kind of, it's that kind of talent and that kind of, uh, 
uh, what do you call it, um, you know, resume that has allowed her to get this far, you know, like that. And, you know, I don't know if, you know, does Bay, is she, is she just a singer? If that's all she has going for her, then, um, you know, like I said, I'm just going to be honest. She, she has to take it very seriously, like a full-time job. She has to wake up every morning and sing her scale in the shower. If she takes a shower in the morning or sing it at breakfast. And then again, after lunch, you know, she has to warm up. She has to know her major and minor scales. She has to know her major and minor chords. She has to know, um, you know, try her very best to develop that relative pitch. Um, she has to know her rhythm and, you know, she has to, she has to grind that, you know, she has to grind it like her life depends on it, like her future depends on it. Because if this is what she wants and what she wants for herself in the future, you know, because you do not, you know, there's, there's nothing like harder than like unrealized dreams, you know, to do that. And, you know, I, you know, as a fan, you know, a fan of these Hololive members, you know, like I, I, I do genuinely want them to succeed and everything like that. But as someone who's just, you know, been through, you know, who's been through the motions of being a musician and whatnot, you know, that, that in and of itself is, those are just the fundamentals, you know, like singing a scale, um, major minor chords, rhythm and you know pitch you know those those are the fundamentals and then everything else everything else is trained nuance right the control of your voice the dynamics you know can you keep your tone you know can you stay in pitch you know that's you know you know you there's some variation you know your voice you know sometimes you're a little too high sometimes you're a little too flat you know you can fix that you have to fix that and, um, uh, you know, obviously, it, those are, those come later, right? And, and after all those, you can start getting into the actual artistry. Only then can you start getting into the actual artistry of music, right? Because, you know, music, you know, you know, music is art. All music is art, but not all art is music, you know? So the the moment she she gets in that she can start getting into that artistic creativity with it you know she can write she can understand okay maybe I, you know how, she can sing her own melodies hum her own melodies write her own songs write, write her own lyrics like i should say and i mean i'm sure she helped with that a little bit too in like her previous album i think she helped a little bit with those lyrics and whatnot but um and, you know, you know, there's the exceptions, right? You know, like, I'm, you know, I'm sure pe people like Ariana Grande, Selena Gomez, Katy Perry, you know, they don't write their own songs, right? You know, sometimes, you know, on average, you know, someone else does it. But, but you know, they had, like I said, you know, they had the experience way before, you know, Ariana Grande, you know, Teen Nick star, actor, you know, singer, performer, you know, that triple threat. That triple threat, you know, singer, uh, singer, dancer, actress, right? You know, that triple threat. Uh, Katy Perry, I don't know too much about her, but she was a really good one. Lady Gaga, you know, Lady Gaga, she was, she, she came in there like, you know, quite literally, you know, and just kind of put the, not a really, she didn't really put the industry on top of its head, but she really made her presence known within the industry, not just through her music, but with the way she kind of presented her, her artistic self and whatnot. She's an actor, she's a singer, and she's a dancer too. So there you go again. These people have extensive, you know, resumes and whatnot. And, you know, here comes, you know, little old Bay. You know, she released a single, she released a couple EPs and she released an album, right? Um, so well, what I think is like the management was really only was really only just trying to give her, put it into perspective a little bit, right? You know, because maybe they've seen it, you know, they've gone through it, right? That's what management knows. That's what they do. They're there to manage you and kind of like advise you when you need it, right? And I think that advice, I think that advice is sound. I'm sure Bay can continue doing music and streaming, 
you know, consistently for the time being. But what I'm saying is that if she wants to take it to the next level, to the, to I guess, how Callie's doing it, she's definitely going to have to put streaming on the back burner, you know, and genuinely focus hard on perfecting, not, not really perfecting, but bettering herself in, in her musical endeavors. Because otherwise, she's going she's gonna to find herself really behind on, where, on her own expectations and her own goals, right? You know, you can't rely on, on others to, you know, hold your hand with this. You know, this is all on you. you know, that's one of the things, art, that's the one thing you cannot, like, cheat on is art. Right. Sure, you can plagiarize, right? And sure you can lip sync and sure even now with AI, you can you can just have the AI learn your voice and sing the song for you, right? But when it comes to one on one and then when it comes to just your own personal integrity, it it's gonna come down to that's what it's gonna come down to, right? You know, it's it's you you alone are gonna be judged on your on your abilities, right? When you're in that you know, audition booth by yourself, when you're in that recording booth by yourself, <laughs> you know, if you're at a tune and it, like, you know, for, for half the song, you're going to, you know, it's not a good feeling, especially if you have aspirations for yourself. And you, if you believe in yourself too, it's really disappointing because, um, because you're letting your own self down, you know? And that's just that's just one something that's just something I found interesting, you know, about this clip. Um, I, I, you know, I usually don't do these kind of videos, so I hope you don't mind me kind of just rambling on for a little bit, you know, for you know a little long. But, but you know, this is this is what it's going to come down to in regards to Bay and her music career. I, I hope for the best for her. I genuinely do, and I hope she, she, um, you know, she, she is taking these lessons and she is practicing when she can, anytime she can, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I genuinely hope that whatever whatever she wants to sing, whatever she wants to do, that she reaches those goals. You know, it may not be anytime soon. You know, keep that in mind. It's not going to be anytime soon. But but if she, if she does want to do this, um, you know, professionally, I should say, or... If, that, if she wants to take it to the next level, you know, she just, she, she should listen to this advice. Is This is, you know, it's, I, I don't want, it's not really good advice as much as, as it is just um, practical, you know, like honest advice, you know, like, <clears throat> you know, you can't, you can't do two things at once, you know, no matter how you, um, you know, no matter how good you think you are at multitasking, you can't do it at the same time. Because you want to know, you want to know something. One of my teachers, um, they said, you know, let, let's see how good you are at multitasking, right? So basically, they showed us an image, right? They said, okay, here's the image. <clears throat> now I'm gonna take the image and I'm gonna make it blank. So they're gonna show us the image and then they're gonna change it to something else, like a black screen, right? They told us, okay. Look at this image and tell us everything that changes, right? So they, so they put up the image, then they take it off. Then they put it back on, take it off, put it back on, take it off. They did that like five times, right? And we caught maybe like one or two things that changed, right? You know, like the position of something changed, maybe something was removed. And then they were like, but we couldn't name them all, right? Because we didn't know. And then so, okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to, take the same image and I'm going to take the same differences, but this time I'm not going to take the screen. I'm not going to take the image off the screen. Right? So they had the image on the screen. We looked at it and then they flipped through it. And through each flip, we could see the differences. And at that time we were able, we were able to learn all five, you know, we, we were able to tell them all five of those differences, all those changes. <clears throat> so the point he was trying to make is that, True multitasking is looking at one thing and then looking at something and totally different and then looking at that other thing again and, you know, just, you know, supposedly, you know, you can just know exactly like what changed about it, right? Like 
you know, it's like trying to read two books at the same time, right? You know, that's just, <laughs> that, I, I don't know about you, but that doesn't make any sense. That's pretty impossible for me, but, but I mean, you know, and trying to retain all that information too, especially when something, something you want to learn, you know, like, you know, like you have, you have Japanese on your right hand and music in the other, you know, the, and not, they're both symbols, right? You're gonna look at a you're gonna look at a, a quarter note and, and think that's a Japanese symbol. You're gonna look at a treble clef and think you're gonna look at a Japanese symbol and think that's the treble clef. You know, it's that kind of just like you know just just be practical with it, right? Um, because your practice matters when it comes to music, and if you're not practicing correctly, you're gonna end up way behind everyone else, and you're just gonna end up disappointing yourself. So. So yeah, that's kind of that's kind of all I had to say about this. I know it's a little lengthy, but but this is a actually really important topic and really something I think that can uh, be transferred across you know the entire you know VTubing sphere, right? You know, like pick pick what you want. Don't try to do too much. You know, if you try to do too much, you will burn yourself out. You know, take these things a step at a time. If Bay can't sing a scale, I would recommend that's where she starts. If you can't sing a full scale, start at just the five, five notes. You know, sing it up, sing it down. That's all you got to do. Just keep that, do that every every morning, every day, or every, every morning, you know, wake up, and then again after lunch, do it the next day. And if you're comfortable, add another note, add two more notes if you want, then try to do the whole scale. You know, sing your major minors while you're at it. Sing your arpeggios while, while you're at it, you know? It's, um... That's all you got to do, you know, take it a step at a time. And especially at this point in time, if, at this point in time, if Faye cannot sing like her major scale, like any, the key of her song, they say her song is an A, she can't sing that A major scale. She, she needs to, she needs to take that serious and she needs to be able to do it, you know? And like, like I said, I'm not just trying to, I'm not trying to be mean and I'm not trying to, I, I understand that, you know, her, her training is a different than mine, but, you know, you know, classical musicians, you know, you know, there's a, there's a reason, you know, classical music has maintained its status for so long throughout the years, right? It's because people, the, the composers who made it and the performers that play it know their stuff and they don't play it. They, they don't play it because, you know, someone just asked them to. You know, they play it because they want to share it. And, you know, obviously my thing is Bay. you know, does Bay want to share, let's say she wants to share her new song, you know, she's not going to want to share it out of tune, you know, she's not going to want to sing all the wrong notes, you know, you know, that's just simple stuff like that. So, so yeah, anyways, um, it's going to be it. It's going to be it for me. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you like these uh, kind of videos, you know, just let me know. And in the comments, and you know, maybe we'll get, maybe I'll make more of them, right? And whatnot. So, anyways, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. If you did, then uh, peace out. I'll see you next video.